it's gonna be a little bit of a spicy one. Like, I'm not even joking. Avoid the comment section. This is going to be, without a doubt, a flame war. I'd love to sit here and be like, oh, people are gonna be, you know, understanding when they see the evidence. But unfortunately, this is someone who is absolutely beloved by huge parts of the firearms community. Okay, my hair has just decided that today is not a day to comply, so when it goes wild, just go with it, please. This is somebody who is adored and hero worshipped by the uh, by huge parts of the shooting community. And if you're getting ready to angry type now, having read the title of this video, go kick rocks. I don't care. Kill your heroes. We have to stop with this idea that there are these gods walking amongst us that we view as above criticism. Because they are the source of our information, we should not challenge their uh, capability or honor or intelligence. And I'm here to challenge all fucking three of those for Jeff Cooper because, yeah, looking at the timeline, it's more than a minute into the video. Jeff Cooper is a piece of shit. I want to make that abundantly clear. He has said and done some things that are so abhorrent, just repeating them is going to get this video demonetized. Which in and of itself is a decent transition to uh, thank you to my Patreon, because the only reason I get to make content that YouTube openly tells me to go fuck myself for making, and that pisses off anybody who would be a sponsor, because I have my Patreon supporters. I love these fucks. They are wonderful human beings. You should go join them if you're not already. Uh, all my Patreon supporters get access to additional episodes, certain Q and A's. They get access to some behind the scenes content. And they also get every single video early. Jeff Cooper didn't invent shit. He is not to be hero worship. Jeff Cooper's grave is one to be used as a gender neutral bathroom because the nightmares that he left behind from the invention of the modern gun influencer culture to the direct impact of his racism and hate on modern training techniques. We all get to walk through those nightmares on a daily basis, so... No. So who the fuck was Jeff Cooper? Honestly, the best way to answer that question, I'm gonna cut now to a naive, dare I say stupid, Ginner Firearms student who knows pretty much everything they know about firearms from books and armchair learning. Hi, I'm a dumbass 18 year old who basically only knows guns through uh, the, the, the fun movies I get to watch. And I'm here to tell you, Jeff Cooper's fucking awesome, man, because, you know, he was in World War II, and then he went to serve in Korea, and then he came back and he invented everything that we know about firearms. He's the reason we think of 45 as having stopping power, because it does watch a movie, and he, uh, he basically invented everything that you need to think of when it comes to handguns. Okay, the World War II and Korea bits that I just said, that stuff's accurate. But everything else, don't listen to past me. Past me is an idiot. Why are you listening to that moron? I can already tell, just knowing the fans of Jeff Cooper, there are gonna be some people foaming at the fucking mouth trying to defend him in the comments. Or trying to say that he definitely wasn't racist, or he wasn't queer bashing, or that in reality, I'm just an upset liberal who's triggered or something. First of all, I'm not a liberal, how fucking dare you? Second of all, let's use some direct quotes. I'm not even gonna try and argue the case. I'm gonna let Jeff Cooper argue it for me. Here goes. Reluctant as we may be to compliment a dictator who prefers to be addressed as comrade, we are compelled to do so in the case of Robert Mugabe of Zimbabwe. He officially refers to homosexuals as perverts who do not deserve civil rights. Maybe there is some hope for the country. And I'm not even getting to the bad stuff yet. Los Angeles and Ho Chi Minh City have declared themselves sister cities. It makes sense. They are both third world metropolises formerly occupied by Americans. Oh, and just in case that one wasn't fucking cut and dry enough for you, there's this too. 
The consensus is that no more than five to 10 people in 100 who die by gunfire in Los Angeles are any loss to society. These people fight small wars amongst themselves. It would seem a valid social service to keep them well supplied with ammunition. And all of that, before we get to the Mozambique drill. What is the Mozambique drill, you might be asking? If you're asking that, then you need to go do more pistol courses, because unfortunately it's a drill that pretty much every instructor teaches. I would love to sit here and say, oh yeah, that's old hat, where there's no reason to learn it, because the drill itself is useful. The drill itself does come from the idea that handgun rounds aren't going to effectively stop the threat, and as such, handgun rounds are maybe not the best idea for if we're going to be using one-shot drills. You want to, if you're going to be practicing defensive handgun techniques, practice essentially shooting until they drop. However, the Mozambique drill itself, it is referencing when a Rhodesian PMC was trying to help maintain colonial control in Africa, specifically during the Mozambique revolution. Okay, bit of history everybody needs for this to make sense. Portugal, like many a uh, colonial power, had colonies all over the globe. This was seen as acceptable during the... It's always been fucking acceptable. I'd love to sit here and be like, oh, it fell out of fashion. There are still fucking colonies on many a place on this planet. America has several. But that's not the point. There was a period post-World War II that, especially if you participated in the fighting in some way, there was an understanding amongst nations that colonies that fought during the war would become their own countries afterwards. And this happened a lot, except this meant a big financial hit to the colony owners, like in this case, Portugal. So Portugal starts sending large amounts of military aid and enforcement to maintain the colonial government. Even though the people are rising up and rightfully saying, we want to be free, what the fuck, we deserve basic rights. Portugal, at first, was just fucking crushing Mozambique forces, who were, remember, random civilians fighting against a colonial oppressor. However, NATO realized exactly how bad it looked if one of their members was still using essentially NATO equipment to maintain a colonial force around the planet. And as such, Portugal decided, well, we still want the money, we still want the colony, but we need to pull back our force. So they had to hire mercenaries. And remember, they had to hire mercenaries pushing for colonialism in Africa. Unfortunately, that meant fucking Rhodesian military. Rhodesian PMCs were called in. This is where the Mozambique drill comes from. And this is also why you calling it the Mozambique drill is racist as fuck. Because the people that they brought in were literally Rhodesian mercenaries who left their own ethno-state in the middle of an ethno-oppressive genocide fighting a war to maintain apartheid conditions. The mercenaries went to places like Mozambique and fought during the revolution, against the revolution. The Mozambique girl is named after a Rhodesian PMC, a mercenary by the name of Mike Rousseau. Now Mike is going around the airport killing anybody who was standing up for their rights. The airport was being cleared of revolutionaries so that they could get a supply drop in. Mike goes around a corner and there is a revolutionary standing there with an AK. He shoots this man twice in the chest. He goes to move on, except this freedom fighter, ill-equipped and struggling as he is, manages to ready his rifle and try and stabilize himself. Mike shoots him in the head, and at that point he goes down. Remember, this is an action specifically and purposefully to support colonial apartheid in Africa. And Jeff Cooper thought it was such a great moment that he should model a big part of his training in one of his most influential drills around it. Gets taught under a different name in a lot of places. The Marine Corps teaches it as the failure to stop drill. They got the idea from that name from the LAPD. We learned about the drill when the LAPD sent a couple officers to the gun sight school in the 1980s, 1982 specifically. And they learned the drill and wanted to teach it to officers, but acknowledged at the time they needed to change the name because it had, quote, racist overtones. If you are so fucking racist that the LAPD from the Rodney King era can recognize you're being a bit too racist, you are morally and ethically fucked. 
There is no recovery from that. I know Jeff Cooper is beloved in the firearms community, but this is not someone who is like even subtle about his hateful, hateful views, like George Soros conspiracies, saying like Muslims couldn't serve in the military, having no use for female Marines, not considering communists human, like multiple what the actual fuck is wrong with you level statements. There should be an entire video just unpacking his hate, but I, I have to, make that just a part of this because even if you try to and i'm not saying we should i think it's morally repugnant to but even if you try and make the argument well you can just you shouldn't look at his ideological beliefs you should look at his impact on firearm training spaces even that was actually terrible but we also shouldn't be skipping past how fucking hateful this guy was this is, and it wasn't subtle. This is something that ended up influencing modern gun culture and modern gun influencer culture. The reason that we have so many people comfortably spouting this racist nonsense while associating with guns is because people like Jeff Cooper came and tested the waters for them. And I think we really need to start figuring out better ways to regulate what we do and don't accept as either useful information, or more importantly, as decent people, when we start trying to figure out how we're going to, you know, put together larger packets of information, when we're going to try and teach this to others. This isn't something that we should just gloss over and pack in. So he's a hateful idiot. But you can learn things from people who are hateful as long as they're knowledgeable specifically about their topic, right? As long as they are actually experts in their fields. Yeah, that's true, but, uh... All of his, like, ideas, they're not kids. He borrowed them. He didn't even borrow them well. Yes, the one thing Jeff Cooper could be pointed to is compiling information. But he takes credit for a lot of stuff that was already out there. And then when he got pushed on it, he would say, well, I was the first person to put it together in this format. One, that's a whole other fucking sentence, guy. That's not what you were saying before. But two, that's not adding useful information. That's just repeating what others have told you, which is fine, except when you try and grab things from other schools of thought, combine them together, and then act like you are a genius for combining these things because you came up with everything. What did you come up with? He named his grouping book technique theory thing modern handgun technique, which, okay, first of all, that's pretentious as fuck, but also you can already see the marketing manipulation and you can tell where that starts falling down in places like the core techniques, even the first rule. You see, the, the, the first component of modern handgun techniques is a large caliber handgun. Why a large caliber handgun specifically? Well, because Jeff Cooper's limited firearms experience were with the military. Now, that doesn't make the information inherently wrong, but it does mean that you have to filter any of the information that's collected through that through a filter. A general, for example, can spend an entire war only using a sidearm. Does that mean we should issue sidearms to the troops rather than rifles? No, it means in that specific context it made sense. Similarly, a large caliber handgun will do more damage than a smaller caliber handgun when you are limited to full metal jacket, which militaries are, or at least they were during World War II in Korea. Now, full metal jacket bullets are designed to be held together. It's what a full metal jacket does. The jacket is a wrapping of metal trying to hold all of the pieces together. That is why in 556, if you are shooting a full metal jacket round, it is not designed to splinter. It may, it may do additional damage if it does, but that's not the intent of how it does damage. It's not designed to create uh, mini shrapnel. If it was, 5.56 would actually be kind of terrible because the bullets are genuinely tiny. You wouldn't get much shrapnel. The whole point is you can get them moving ridiculously fast and create sonic channels. Large caliber handguns make more sense in the context of you have to go serve in Korea. 
because the ammunition you're going to be given will be full metal jacket and you will have the choice between nine full metal jacket and 45 full metal jacket and between those two if i had to shoot at somebody who was shooting at me yeah 45 is the better of those two however modern handguns use these things called hollow points i don't know if you've heard of them they're wonderful they're like little mushrooms that explode when they hit things and that has the fascinating side effect that you don't need quite so large a caliber because the size of the bullet is not the thing doing damage anymore. This is part of the problem with naming your technique the modern technique. Yes, this was modern when he wrote it in the 50s. I don't care that it's referred to as the modern handgun technique. It is absolutely not based in modern theory. Two can be combined together. First up, you have the weaver stance. Can kind of be discussed together because while both of them actually still makes sense. Neither of them are actually Jeff Coopers. In fact, he learned them from the Marine Corps, then turned around, said, I did that dot meme and made it his. Well, he and a buddy did, because the first part is the Weaver stance. Now, Jack Weaver did not invent the Weaver stance. The reason it is called the Weaver stance is Weaver learned it, applied it to a bunch of competition shooting, got famous for it. Jeff Cooper realized he was getting famous for teaching his techniques and needed some of that shine for himself. So he started including him and using his uh, his student list as gun site members. For somebody who hated communism, Jeff Cooper was sure comfortable just going, your students, our students. Really, Comrade Cooper. Weaver's stance is also one of those things that frankly, if you're shooting in a fight, it just fucking makes sense. You drive one leg behind you, that way you have something driving the force of the gun into the ground rather than just like your butt waggling in the air trying to control it. And on top of that, you make your shoulders smaller because you don't have armor and you're getting shot at. Like, yeah, have less of the you be out there shooting back. That's just common sense. And that's probably the reason why, despite the fact that it wasn't technically taught to Marines, there are tons of photos going back to World War I of American Marines shooting from that stance. The third component of the modern handgun technique is the flash sight picture. And that shit was straight up taught by the Marine Corps. If you read Rex Applegate's book, Kill or Be Killed, he describes not only was that technique taught by the Marine Corps, but he goes into how that has been honed by the Marine Corps basically since we've been shooting with iron sights. This is not, not only is this not new, this is straight up just stolen from where he trained. The third component is the compressed surprise break. And this, again, we are positive it is not new information. Now, this may not be something that a lot of Marines were being taught at the time, but interestingly, rapid shooting as a technique, and specifically, Pulling the trigger fast enough that you beat the trigger break? That comes from a German World War I manual of how to shoot a pistol effectively. That's not his technique. It's not even like from this century. It's just how handguns work. Now the next part is a rapid and precise draw stroke, which my guy, are you really trying to act like drawing quickly is your invention. <laughs> Again, he claims this was more just a compiling of techniques, but even when he was claiming that, he was claiming it was with additional information, and none of this shit is new. None of this is new. All of this is stuff you would have learned even at the time. And now the fact that he's hero worshipped for coming up with it is like almost asinine. It's like trying to claim that a, a racist, homophobic, queer bashing asshole was breathing and therefore he invented the concept of taking oxygen in from the air and we need to respect him from, for it. No, the fuck we don't. He doesn't even fall into the category of take the useful information and move on. There is no useful information to get from him. You won't get from other instructors in a better, more useful format. At best, Jeff Cooper is someone to be studied. Jeff Cooper is someone studied in the same way that you would study a plague or a, a strange medical condition. Absolutely, he is not somebody to be hero worshipped. He was, even if you skip past the 
racist, sexist, queer bashing nonsense that built up his ideology. And I really don't think you should. But even if we skip past that, we still land on the fact that he was not bringing a lot of useful information at the time. And now it's just fucking meaningless. Get Jeff Cooper out of your life. Jeff Cooper is also famous for pushing the scout rifle concept. Uh, essentially a bolt action rifle with a forward mounted scope, a shorter barrel, and the idea being it will be a all you need rifle, a kind of all rounder that you can just grab and run with. And then it's part of what I modeled my Carcano build after, uh, but to be honest, there, there are strict limits to how capable that is. The scopes that you have to use for such a rifle suck. And having shot that one and a bunch of other similar scout rifles, I can honestly say, eh, there are significantly better options for anything that it would do. Especially because in the modern day, we have fucking slings. You don't need to like, worry about how to carry it on your side in a balanced manner. If you're carrying it, it goes over a shoulder. It feels like it's set up for an era where there was just different shit available and different concepts. It doesn't, it looks vaguely cool, but it is not a real useful tool nowadays. You can do much better with just a regular bolt with a sling. All of that before we get to his, his impact on modern influencer culture, because unfortunately he has had a rather terrifying impact on every piece of gun culture by being the original gun influencer. He started out as a soldier. He moved on to create his own training school. And you know what? If he'd stopped there, fine enough. It's somebody who went to war and then came back and was passing on the knowledge they had acquired. I almost would have had respect for that. But they went from that to the head of the NRA and from that to a national spokesperson for some of their most hateful and heinous views, giving some of the most atrocious interviews, writing terrifying columns, legitimately pushing out hate as an ideology that should be accepted amongst gun enthusiasts. And it's worth remembering, he was doing this at a time where it wasn't easy to look up what people were saying from a broad spectrum. It was really easy for someone like Jeff Cooper to double speak their way through uh, a lot of the being pressed on questions because people couldn't like easily Google the stuff that he was saying. So you would get a lot of police agencies and a lot of uh, military groups and just a lot of random civilians that would get training from him that he was able to convince people like administrators or uh, even some civilian groups he wasn't hateful he was just wildly focused in specific areas except he would double speak and immediately talk about how disgusting he thought those groups were or how they were just less than human, or how they were incapable of intelligent of uh, responding to emergencies intelligently, for example. Fuck Jeff Cooper. All of this is to say, simply, fuck Jeff Cooper. Nothing he added to the space was useful, relevant to modern times, or devoid of racism, queer bashing, and just ideological nonsense. Anything you could get from his teachings, you can get better from other people. And the poison that he left in our community, we still need an antidote for. Well, that's gonna be it for me. Thank you all for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Big shout out to my Patreon supporters. Y'all are the only reason I get to keep making these videos. If you wanna support me, head on over to patreon.com slash queerarmor. One dollar a day and get access to videos early. But other than that, this was a bit of a spicy one. Try to be nice in the comments and remember, kill your heroes. None of this would have been a problem if we hadn't turned people into gods in the first place. Nobody is perfect. Nobody is worth always extolling. And the people that you build up, you will inevitably need to tear down. That's gonna be it for me. Stay dangerous, y'all. Keep each other safe. And remember, moral doesn't mean legal, and Stonewall was a fucking riot. Peace.